Look at you. You are the epitome of the pot calling the kettle black when it comes to responsibility, the kind of guys that, that, that you should allow in your life, having a job. So it seems like since they got married, Sophie and Rob's issues, or should I say Sophie, Rob and Sophie's mum's issues, haven't gone away. They haven't just disappeared with some vows and a ring. In fact, things have now escalated to the point where Rob is calling Claire out for a change. But rather than be stuck in the middle, Sophie is prepared to walk away from everything. I've left everything and I just wish he would make me feel a bit more comfortable here. I think at some point if it doesn't change, I'll just get tired and move on from it. And that's why I'm- Oh my God. Wow. Now, I'd like to say that this is a big 180 from the last time we saw Rob and Sophie on their wedding day. But the truth is, it's really not. Both of them had doubts before the wedding. In fact, Sophie even said she didn't fully trust Rob the night before her wedding. I mean, come on. And despite the fact that they've gone from I do to yet more drama, initially at the tell-all, they really try hard to paint a picture-perfect image of their new life together. How is married life treating you? We actually moved right after we got married to Austin, so we've kind of started a new life together. This yeah. is a nice town. Yeah, How do nice. you like it? I like, I like it. Sounds perfect. Or does it? You see, there's something about their body language, something about the way that they're talking, that feels like they're holding back. They're not being entirely genuine. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't doubt that having an indoor bathroom finally must be great. But it's just that I don't believe that that was their biggest problem. I can pee in my own home, it's great. Oh. <laughs> Would not having a bathroom be a deal breaker for anybody? I mean, it'd be pretty rough. The truth is, the whole bathroom issue represents something a lot bigger. It's symbolic of their 90 days together. It's a metaphor for the sh that kept on coming back up again and again. The constant, repeated arguments about the same things. Like Rob's cheating, for example. So tell us, Rob, what really happened there? The worst thing that I responded was, send more. No, oh. that's not true. Don't downplay it. He didn't just say, send me more. He'd be like, you look so sexy. I'm so hard for you. Now, from the offset, Rob is doing his typical Rob thing of trying to downplay the situation. And Sophie isn't having it. Rather than try to protect him, she's more than ready to hang him out to dry with all the gory details about his indiscretions. And Rob isn't happy about how candid she is. It's telling other women, oh, I wanna f you, you look so sexy. That's cheating. I never told anybody I wanna a no, Not that statement, that. but I'm trying to tell him. Like, Can you be clear? Yikes. There's clearly already cracks starting to form on their united front. That snide little be clear that Rob dished out to Sophie sounded almost like a command. And even though this whole segment is about how Rob was unfaithful, it's pretty rich that it's Rob getting angry at Sophie for her lack of clarity and transparency. It's Rob who's acting like this whole cheating scandal is a thorn in his side, especially when it comes to the repercussions of his actions, like Sophie now checking his phone. She ought to be sure she's looked Can I ask through my whole Can phone. Can I answer the question? Um, I feel like because, like, I, I now check everything. Right, well, that doesn't exactly sound like a healthy marriage, does it? For as much as these two tried their best to project a certain image of their new life in Texas, already things are beginning to unravel. And unfortunately, it's not about to get any better, because it's at this point that Claire is invited on screen. Do you still stand by everything you said about Rob? <laughs> yes. Your opinion of him has not gotten better? No. And why is that? So I'm guessing the love hasn't exactly lasted between Claire and Rob then. Those wedding day niceties have definitely now worn off. And unsurprisingly, the unresolved issues between them are once again rearing their ugly heads. You see, Claire still isn't willing to let go about Rob's prior living situation. She still holds a grudge about the whole thing. If he really loved her, that bathroom, I mean, no, I don't agree with him bringing that. He should have waited. 
I agree with what she says about the house. Right, look, I get it. On the one hand, Rob's living situation was below par. It was definitely far from ideal, especially for two people and a dog living there. But the thing is, by the end of the season, I thought Claire had moved on. She stayed with them. She was sleeping in their apartment for crying out loud. If she was that bothered by it, why did she do that? Why didn't she stay in her hotel? Plus, they're not living in that situation anymore. They have levelled up. So I'm really not sure why Claire is determined to beat Rob over the head with this. But the fact that Sophie agrees with her mum really says a lot. It makes you question, does she regret coming to America? Is that why she's siding with her mum over Rob, even though he has now cleaned up his act? She's never going to take my side over her mom. Like, I really don't think she ever will. If she was and, in the wrong, I would. And your mom is in the wrong, and so are you. You're both in the wrong. Because you knew my situation at the time. Look, it's no secret that Sophie and her mom have a very close relationship. It's rare that we see Sophie stand up to her mom. Like, on several occasions, we've seen Claire really come for Rob. And all the while, Sophie has barely batted an eyelid. Now, don't get me wrong, because neither of these guys, Claire or Rob, are perfect. Both have, in fact, very similar hot-headed temperaments. But Sophie's bias towards her mum has been clear since day one. And it's especially shocking when Rob reveals that for all the constant criticism of his situation, Sophie knew all along how he was living, why he was living that way. You knew my situation at the time. You knew I was trying to get out of that apartment and things fell through. You, you actually knew what I was going through and you still let your mom talk about me like that. Rob is no saint, but honestly, all those comments that Claire made about him, I'm pretty sure they must have dented his ego. It couldn't have been nice being ridiculed and made fun of by his future mother-in-law in that way. Like, Claire puts her daughter on a pedestal, right? That much is apparent. But the way that she talks about Sophie having to pay for her own flight to the US makes it sound like Sophie's some kind of amazing superhero out solving world hunger or something. Then three months, you were paying for the visa, sorting out your flights, working three jobs by yourself in England. He was at home playing on his game, whatever it is, console. Claire is trying her best to paint her daughter in the perfect light. She's trying to use Sophie's hard work against Rob. There's an implication with what she said that Rob can't provide for Sophie. He's somehow inadequate, lazy perhaps. But Rob points out that's just not the case. You see, for the entire 90 days that Sophie was on a K-1 visa, Rob was working throughout. And it's not just when she came to the States. He was working his ass off before she came too. I have never not had a job. Even when I lost my job, I was working two jobs at that time, so I still had a job. So that already, you're inaccurate. Okay, Rob, fair enough. And that's definitely an interesting development to add to the story now, months after the wedding. Like, all summer long, the entire time that Claire was in the States visiting Sophie, Rob was being criticised for not having a job. So it's interesting that this information has only now come out. But, in any case, Claire is really twisting the knife here. She really wants to paint Rob out as being stingy. She even goes as far as to state that prior to the show being filmed when Rob and Sophie were living in Mexico, it was her who paid their rent. But the problem is, Rob refutes this. That's a blatant lie, he says. In Mexico, Rob, who was paying the rent? Me. She paid our rent in Mexico? We're trying to hear. She is lying. Notice how Rob has just accused her mum of lying, yet Sophie sits there in silence. She doesn't deny it, but she doesn't back Rob up either. What happened to her insisting that she'd disagree with her mum if her mum was ever in the wrong? Because in this moment, it does seem like Rob is telling the truth. And clearly, Sophie's silence and Claire's accusations have sent Rob completely over the edge. He's very, very triggered. Look at you! You are the epitome of the pot calling the kettle black when it comes to responsibility, the kind of guys that, that, that you should allow in your life, having a job. Those are some low blows from Rob. But can anyone really blame him? 
there's only so much one man can take. He's had so many digs about his character that it was inevitable he'd bite back. Look, Rob ain't no saint, but he has moved out of Inglewood. He has made good on his promise to Sophie, but none of that seems to be good enough for Claire. She's still harping on about his past. Her standards seem to be too high. I mean, there's no way that Rob can change the past. And the truth is, for as much as Sophie might want it, she's gonna have to come to the realisation that her husband and her mum will never get along. I would like for you to respect my mom. Mom, I would like for you to respect Rob as well. Look at what you say. Look at, look at what you told the world. Rob the knob? That's mad disrespectful. Yeah, I, I, I... Rob's right. Like, he hasn't been going around making snide remarks about her, has he? It's not as if he's been calling her Claire the Bulldog for all of her growling and barking, is it? But it's very telling that at no point so far in this tell-all has Sophie tried to defend her husband. While her mum has been spouting off and saying whatever it is she wants about her husband, Rob is expected to stay quiet, not react. But that's just not realistic. Like, do I regularly disrespect her at yes, all? Yes, to me. When oh, all the time. I don't even talk to you, Claire. It seems like the whole question of respect is too much for these two right now. It's too big a topic. Like, before they get to respect, maybe they need to start small. Maybe they need to start by being in the same room together. The venom that exists between them is palpable, and by now, Rob and Sophie's castmates have all heard enough to begin to feel bad for Rob, or at least they begin to speak up so that he has someone in his corner. They trigger each other. Yeah, they do. You yeah. know what I mean? You don't see Rob yelling until she came on. They're never gonna uh. get along. That is the understatement of the year. But you know what? We did witness them have a reconciliation at the end of the season. We did see Claire drop her agenda, if only for a second or two. And similarly, we did see Rob make an effort. We saw him try and have some manners around her. But since then, things have got worse than ever before. To the point where it now sounds like Claire wishes that Sophie had never got married in the first place. I mean, not because of his money, not because of his finances, not because of the way he lives, just by the way he speaks to her and the way he treats her. He doesn't make her feel like a princess. Now, this isn't the first time that we've seen Claire compare Sophie to a princess. Before they were married, she was telling Sophie that Rob was a frog and he'd never be her Prince Charming. But the truth is, Sophie's mum has never given him a chance. He's Rob the Knob in her eyes, and he'll never be anything but, regardless of what he does. And it's really starting to look like the biggest problem in their marriage right now is Sophie's mum. I'm kind of like, oh, Sophie's between me and her mom. No, Sophie's with her mom. I'm by myself. She's my wife. She's supposed to be the voice for me. More and more, this seems like a marriage between three people. Sophie's mum is so involved in this relationship. She seems to be constantly in Sophie's ear about how sh Rob is. And in Sophie's defence, it must be really hard to hear her mum hear someone she loves and trusts constantly belittling her husband. But it really is her responsibility to tell her mum to back off. She needs to draw a line in the sand. But sadly, it seems like Sophie would much rather leave the marriage than tell her mum to back off. I've left everything and I just wish he would make me feel a bit more comfortable here. I think at some point, if it doesn't change, I'll just get tired and move on from it. And that's why I'm- Oh my God. Now that is a very shocking thing to say. But Rob now seizes on his chance to play victim. In true Rob fashion, he begins to lay it on thick. He begins to really ham up and exaggerate his performance of being a man scorned. He's very, very comfortable playing the role of victim. God, I would have loved if my wife would have been like, you know, the 90 days was tough, but Rob has showed me in so many ways. He, he definitely works hard. Where's the, Rob, thank you for, for being solid and holding it, holding it down. Holding it down. Look, Rob, for as much as I think that Claire treats you harshly, 
for as much as I agree with the fact that Sophie could jump to your defence once in a while, this is a bit too rich coming from a guy who has only just managed to secure a home with an indoor bathroom. The whole conversation begins to veer very off topic and he starts to come down very hard on Sophie, perhaps encouraged by the support he received from his co-stars. Rob starts treating Sophie the way he's upset that she treats him. You're never because grateful. He's, he's like, not, you've never been grateful. It's not, the whole, it's not a I'm grateful all the he time. He does these half-truths to make me sound bad, and it's not it's true. not a half-truth. This relationship is so emotionally turbulent. These two trigger each other to such an extent that, as predicted, marriage has only amplified their issues. Their problems seem bigger than ever before, and with both of them being so stubborn, even when Sophie promises to change, I very much doubt it will be enough. Clearly I need to support him more when it comes to my mum and I'm gonna do better at that and and in general support you more. Those sound like empty promises, but we have been surprised by their promises before. Rob has come through. He has delivered on his promise for a better, bigger apartment. So who knows, maybe Sophie might change. But it's impossible to ignore the cracks in the foundations of their marriage. If things don't change and change fast, this marriage won't last much longer.